All right, welcome back to the podcast that we still haven't named yet uh, for the July edition. Uh, got some good things, some new programs, some market updates, and of course, our loan of the month. We'll kick it over to start with owner Chris Sabonic. Uh, yeah, so I think the first thing we're going to talk about this this uh, this month is the essentially the big government refi opportunity, right? So uh, we've got a special program out right, right now. It's called Govy 125. Um, to, to really sum it up, make it, make it super simple, we're able to give you 125 basis points um, if you're doing a streamlined refi on an FHA or a VA loan. So uh, to translate and to make it super simple, if you got an FHA or a VA loan, really what, last year? In, in 2023. In, in 2023. Yeah. Maybe even scraping into early, or I'm sorry, into late, late, into late 2022s. Just speaking in terms of rates, mm -hmm. late 2022 or really any time in 2023, it's 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 probably time to refi. Yeah. Or 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 it's very close with yeah. this program. Yeah. For the VA or FHA loans again, from uh, the year 2023. And again, when Chris is talking about, we get 125 basis points, kind of broken down what that really looks like in real dollars. So if you have a $400,000 loan, we can basically apply $5,000 worth of points for you to buy that don't cost you anything towards that refinance opportunity. So that's what we're seeing now. I've, we've seen a lot of people already take advantage of this. They've gone from interest rates in the sevens down to interest rates in the high fives um, or even low sixes. So definitely some opportunities out there for the VA or for those VA loans and the FHA loans. And the streamlined process, super quick, super efficient. We don't need income docs. You don't need assets. No, no appraisal. No appraisal needed. Yeah. So, what do we? What, what are the things we're going to grab out of this? I, I need a credit report and mortgage statement and a mortgage statement. That's yeah. It. I need a credit yeah. report and proof proof that you occupy the house and an ID and an ID. Yeah. yeah. And that's about and, it. And that's it. You really don't need much. They go super quick. And like Max said, uh, four hundred thousand dollar loan. If you're sitting on a four hundred thousand dollar loan, we have basically a five thousand dollar rebate essentially mm -hmm. that the lender gives us that we can apply to your pricing. And what that allows us to do is either get your rate super low or get your rate lower and knock your closing costs way down. How, how and what we do with that $5,000 rebate is gonna depend on you and your own situation and what's gonna work best for you. So like we need to talk to you so we can figure out what that's gonna be. But that $5,000 rebate, there is almost nobody that we helped with a VA or an FHA loan in 2023 that isn't basically ready right now yeah, to, to take, to take, take full advantage. advantage of this. Yeah, uh, there's going to be a couple who just based on their timing, it's not quite right, or maybe they bought, maybe they bought like a lot of points when when they got it. They might not quite be ready. But in in most cases, for most of these people, if you did a government loan again, 2023 or even really in 2022, if you got an FHA or a VA loan, whether it's through us or not. If it's not through us, it's probably even more so time to do this because our, our rates are generally going to be better than you know than the general public anyhow. But if you got one and, it's, and it wasn't through us, like now is definitely probably the time. Yeah, and this is something too that we don't want people to sit on, not just because we want to get them in, get them in, and get them in, but this program only lasts until September 2nd. So we need to have your loan locked and finished by that time. So it's not something where we can sit around and wait and think about it for the next month or so. This will not be available September 3rd. So now's the time to take advantage of this. And we have had programs that came out in the past where people thought about it, thought about it, didn't pull the trigger. And then those programs were done and they were stuck with this interest rate that wasn't that attractive, paying more than they should have been paying. Um, even to this day, they probably still are. So don't sit on these programs. Take advantage of these right away. I know we had some with it hemmed and hawed last time when they came out with one of these refi programs before. Yeah, we had one of these a couple months back. Yeah, probably and early 2024. Yeah, we yeah. had one of these early in the year, and it was the same thing. The window was short, but the people who took advantage of it, they're... That was a little bad timing. They came out with it, and then rates jumped themselves right after. right now they're announced this and rates have actually kind of tilted a little down yeah rates are hopefully heading in the, yeah in the right direction now yeah starting to so definitely don't sit on this program government 125 again va or fha within 2023 uh you're definitely want to give us a shout and it doesn't take much to even quote these five minutes no if that I, yeah we need five ten minutes on the phone mm -hmm. and and grab your mortgage statement if you have it that'll be one of the most helpful things yeah grab your current mortgage statement give us you know give us a call Shoot us an email, five, 10 minutes on the phone. Like Max said, though, it disappears on September 2nd. So, so don't sleep on it. Don't, don't call us the last week of August and, and hope that we can do this. Call us now 
And maybe it isn't time. Maybe we do need to figure something out. Or maybe mm-hmm. your credit needs just a, a slight tweak because mm-hmm. you, you, you got into some credit trouble. That's fine. If you call us now, mid-July, late July, we can figure this out. If you call us mid to late August, we might not have time to figure it out. So yeah. call us now. And I mean, I know you've already helped a couple people. You're saving a couple people a couple hundred bucks a month already. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And credit really isn't, it's not a big deal breaker with this either. No, credit's not nearly as important as no. it is when you go to purchase. No, it's really this, not. This program is, this program is literally dedicated solely and, and only for reducing people's interest rate. Like yeah. the only thing that this program exists for is to lower your rate and lower your payment. Like that's yeah. the whole purpose of it. So if you, again, beating a dead horse on this, if you did a 2023, in 2023, if you did a VA or an FHA loan, it, it is probably time to refi. Call us and find out. Yeah. So along those lines, getting to the market, we kind of just mentioned it. Market's starting to come down. We've talked about refi opportunities for VA and FHA so far. We are seeing conventional refi opportunities as well. There's a few clients that we've had from our past. Uh, again, look at in 2023, kind of like the Q4 of 2023. So October, November, December, um, those people were getting rates, even with super good credit, 7.5, 7.4, 7.6 range. Those people we've been able to bring down to something in the mid to high sixes. So those opportunities are available as well. And there, it really is a situation where it is dependent on the buyer and the situation. But what we've seen is and what we've noticed, the higher the loan amount, the more flexibility that we have and the lower payment we can really get you and the more savings that you're going to get as well. Totally. Yeah. These lenders, I mean, they, they incentivize high loan amounts. They like, they like high loan amounts. I mean, why, I don't know if I'm a lender, I guess I would too. I want to lend as much money as I possibly can, you know, at that interest rate. So they do incentivize high loan amounts. And like Max said, uh, if you have a lower loan amount, it doesn't mean it's not time to refinance that either, but there is kind of like Max said, more, more pricing incentives for those with higher loan amounts. So, uh, I mean, I mean, back to like what Mac was saying, we were talking at first when we started the, the, the show here about VA and FHA doing the government refis, conventional refis are on the table again. And like Mac said, when rates really peaked out there, uh, end of 23, Q4 ish, mm-hmm. like 2023, uh, there are, there are absolutely conventional refis that, that, that need to happen now. Like, I think, what did you know? Seven and a half percent. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like anything around a seven and a half. And that's stuff that we did at a seven and a half with Q4, which again, We've been, again, not tooting on our own horn, but we've been lower in pricing than most people out there. So again, if you got a conventional loan somewhere else, we might be looking back. You might have gotten a 7.5 in May of 2023 or in June, or you might have gotten a 7.8 or a 7.7. Um, so again, those opportunities would be available to you right now as well to look to try to lower this payment. Again, the big things are if the loan amount um, is higher, where there's more flexibility with us there and also credit scores. And it is great to have, you know, above 700, 730, 740. If your credit score is like 780 or 800, I mean, you can really, really take advantage of the current market situation. Those are people we've been able to see the biggest savings for. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, and Max said, you know, not going to toot our horn. I will. Like we're usually <laughs> an eighth to a quarter point better probably then if you go find a mortgage, if you go call a big box lender or a bank or, you know, I mean, pretty much any lender, even a lot of local places, you go call a local lender and you call us and you put them down apples to apples, cost comparison, make everything the same. We're, we're consistently an eighth to a quarter better in interest rate, sometimes way more just depending on the situation, but uh, we're consistently better there. But, but to echo what Max said, like, if you, we're looking at our loans and we see people from Q3 or really, really from late Q3 or early Q4 of last year that need refis. Talking 2023. 2023. Yeah. And those are our clients mm-hmm. from Q, like Q3, Q4. So what Max saying is if you weren't working with us and mid last year, Q2, Q3, even Q1, maybe depending on where you were working, if you weren't working with us and you bought a house with someone else last year, you probably wasted some money, but that's okay. Don't waste your money on the refinance. Don't throw away money that you don't need to on the refinance and call us and let us know because those conventional refis are out there. And and like, again, to echo what Max said, we're finding our clients from Q4, but that means that there are clients from other lenders who got set up at other places that probably from Q2 and Q3 before our rate, you know, they had high rates before we did. So it took us till Q4 to catch up to those, those mm-hmm. places. So if you're, if you're in that boat, like Max said, seven and a half, 
honestly, if, if your conventional rate is anywhere in the sevens, you know, seven and a half is what we wrote down. But if you're anywhere in the sevens, it's probably worth calling. Yeah, low sevens are going to be close. But if you're in the mid, if, if mid if to you're high, in the mid to high sevens, auto call. It's time for a refund. Yeah, yeah. If, auto if call. you're if you're in the mid to low sevens, I'd still call us, and we'll, we're not going to push someone into something that they shouldn't do or that doesn't make sense. So if you call us and it's not time to refi, we're not going to twist your arm and say, oh my God, you should refi because I could save you $25 a month. No, hey, right now the savings aren't there, but I'm glad you called. We'll put you on our list and we'll yeah. make sure that as soon as this rate hits, you're the next person to get the phone call. Yeah, yeah and that's the thing. Get in front of us, you know, making us, we'll put you on the list here basically of people that are showing some interest. We write down what your interest rate is right now, what interest rate, you, our goal interest rate is, like what we kind of kind of be at. And then once we get there, um, being able to give you a shout. So that we're talking about getting ready for refinances, kind of rolling into the next thing that we want to talk about. And we have talked about this in previous episodes here, but being ready to purchase, being ready to purchase. We are obviously in the swing here of summer. Um, some people can't believe it's midsummer already. I've, I'm one of, multiple I'm one times. Of those people. Can't believe it's midsummer. My wife was shopping for backpacks yesterday for school, so that's already kind of started. So obviously, buying season we're right in the thick of it right now. But we're still seeing people go look at houses, go to open houses, and they don't. They're not pre-approved, and they're not ready to go, and they can't make an offer and pull the trigger. Houses aren't lasting. I mean, houses are lasting three, four days. Yeah. How, the housing, so if you go housing, see it and you don't have a pre-approval letter, or there's, you know, if you're self-employed, or we we gotta we gotta establish where we're gonna get a gift from, or something like that, we gotta clean something up with our credit. Like we should have done this in April or May already, but if we haven't, still get on it now so we can be ready to go. Uh, yeah, I, Matt couldn't have said that really any better. Like, and and I know I've you guys are tired of hearing it from me, but but be ready. Like, get your pre-approval letter. I, I watched someone miss out on a deal yesterday yesterday for this exact same reason. They weren't ready. We said to get ready. Nobody nobody wanted to do it. We waited a couple weeks. Then we sent in stuff, and we lost the house yesterday because of it. And uh, we're ready to go now. Like, we're, mm-hmm. we're ready to go now, but that house is gone. And, you know, again, like I said, Matt couldn't have said it better be ready. But, like, I won't say it's the exact same, but honestly – the housing market, especially here, at least locally, hasn't really changed a whole lot since like, since during, during COVID, like yeah. people are, there are still multiple offers on properties. People are still going over asking. People are still putting appraisal guarantees in. It, it's maybe a little different. There's maybe not as much excess cash out there. Offers might not be going as much over, but the the same like key points are still there. People are still going over ask. People are still doing multiple offers. Houses are still flying off the market. Like not a lot's changed. The market is still insane. Yeah, and one thing that I've noticed a lot, I, I do a, I try to do a lot of open houses. You know, I've been probably doing one a week here for the entire summer. Just did the one last night. We do one a week for yeah, a long time. J- <laughs> just one just did one last night, and the number of people. I mean, we had a lot of people come in this open house. We had probably 20, 20 groups of people. Come in, and I want to say on a weekday night. On a weekday, on a, on a Tuesday weekday. night. This isn't a weekday. Tuesday night. night. Tuesday night. Property was pretty sick, though. Really sick house. Uh, we'll, we'll be gone by the time this airs for sure. But we probably had uh, those twenty people came in, seven or eight, not pre-approved, not pre-approved. And I mean, I get it. Everyone looks at Zillow. Everyone does their own shopping on Zillow twenty-four-seven. Even if they like their house, they're still on Zillow checking out homes. And there's people. If you're going to an open house, you should be pre-approved. But like if you're if you're taking it that serious, we might go to an open yeah. house. You should be pre-approved. You should be pre-approved. Yeah. Well, totally. But I mean, think about what you just said. Let's say eight out of twenty you said didn't have a pre-approval. Rough numbers, obviously. Yeah. So forty percent of people that are shopping out there are shopping without a pre-approval. So look at it this way: if you are one of those sixty that did have a pre-approval, and you know of those sixty, how many of those pre-approvals are good? There's more questions there. But if you're mm. one of those sixty that does have a pre-approval, you are in front of almost half of your competition to yep. that house. So you, by getting a pre-approval right now, just eliminated half of the people that are probably looking at the same house. At least a quarter. At least a quarter. At least a quarter. Yeah. At least, I mean, 40%. Yeah. Right, right on that house right there. Yeah. But, but you're, you're, you know, you're just eliminating, when you're talking about eliminating competition, by simply putting a pre-approval in your hand, you eliminate, let's call it, 25 to 50 percent mm-hmm. of your competition. You are you are already that many steps ahead of your competition. So, in a, we just got done saying how competitive and how crazy it is. 
if you can eliminate 50% of the competition, let's do it. Yeah. And, and the pre-approval, like we talk about, application takes about 10 minutes to fill out. 20, 20 if you're going slow. Yeah. It's, like, it's free. So it ain't going to cost you nothing. Uh, we have the option to do soft pulls rather than hard pulls. You know, again, get you ready. To, like, there's really not a reason to not get ready. Like I said, if you're going to open houses, even if it's something you saw on Zillow that attracted your eye, you should be ready to go because it happened last night to two people there that they weren't pre-approved. We worked on it last night. It was, it was perfect house, I bet. They loved it. They loved it. Loved it. Loved it. But they were ready. We're ready to make an offer. Um, I know one of them didn't get it in. I'm not sure about the other one. But, you know, those people miss out on that opportunity where all it would have taken was a 10-minute phone call with us, you know, for one weekday, and we could have this thing ready to go by that night or the next day. So, yeah. you know, don't wait. We talked about don't waiting with refinance opportunities. Don't wait for those pre-approvals, especially if you're going out there um, and checking these homes out because they're not, they're not lasting. And one thing, too, that's been pushing people away that we've heard, and I, I heard some good news coming from a couple of real estate agents, is the non-contingent part about it. You know, people think, I, 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 got, I there's only the only way I can get an offer accepted is if I'm ready to buy without selling my home first. And honestly, homes are going so fast that that's not that big a deal anymore. No, I would agree. I mean, yes, uh, m- might you be, you know, ha- still happens. M- might you have an edge? Might someone edge you out if they're not if they're non contingent? Mm-hmm. Sure, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to deny that someone might edge you out. However, I mean, let's just think. I would just tell most people think of, think of think of ten people that you know. Could those ten people buy a house without selling their house first? No, I bet you the answer is no for like eight or nine out yeah. of ten of them. I, say, I can think of like so, one or two. Yeah. So, just going on to that point, like, you're not way behind the eight ball. You're not at an extreme disadvantage if you have to sell a house. Now, might you get a picky seller who had an issue before with some sort of contingency and they don't want to do it again? Of course. Like, that's, that's real estate. That's, there's mm-hmm. there's got, to, got to find another house in that case. But I would say, for the vast majority of, of houses, most people understand. In fact... Most sellers that you're going to run into that are selling their house are selling in the that same house boat. In the to same buy boat. another house. Yeah, they're in the so same boat. So they totally get it. They're a little sympathetic. They're a little bit understanding of it. Like I said, is a realtor or an agent maybe going to push you? Is the listing agent maybe going to say, oh, we don't want contingent offers? I mean, of course they don't. And it is their job to get you know the, the strongest and the best offers or whatever the case is. Best terms, best but, all that, yeah. But you'd also be shocked how many people could say, hey... I'll give you a better offer than whatever you have on the table that's not contingent. It just is contingent on selling my house so that I can mm-hmm. unlock this equity. But like I said, I, I tell people all the time when they come to me scared, I'm not going to be able to buy because I'm going to have to sell first. It's really not that big of a deal. It, it's, it's really not. It's, it's a big deal if you make it a big deal, and I don't think mm-hmm. it's a big deal. Most people are doing it. How many times are we doing a buy-sell that that chain of people needing to buy and sell goes five, six, maybe seven houses deep? Because people... Mm-hmm. People, especially here in America, where we all live, uh, just their capital, their money, it's, it's a lot of times a, the largest chunk of it is in their house. And, like, they need to unlock that equity in their house to buy another Purchase one. Purchase the new so one, it's, yeah. It's, not, it's definitely not a reason to, to worry or to miss out on anything. And like Max said, especially if you've got a nice house, it's going to be gone the day you put it up for sale. Yeah. Or, or, or the weekend that you put it up for sale, you're going to have multiple offers. And I've seen so many agents, and I know you can attest to the same thing. I've seen so many agents, you know, especially really good agents that aren't scared of having a contingent buyer. They will go present that right when they present their offer. Hey, our buyer wants your house. It's contingent on the sale. They do need to sell their house. However, I've already had pictures taken. Theirs is hitting the market on Friday. And we already anticipate, you know, we already mm-hmm. have X amount of schedule, you know, showing scheduled. It's, it's pretty much a non-conversation because other real, estates under, other real estate agents understand that that house is also going to sell just like that. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be good to go. Yeah. And you can still get, I, I have two right now, they're contingent on the sale of theirs. But with that contingency comes an appraisal waiver. So, again, benefits there. They're going to have the funds needed to put down to go towards that. So it works in their favor a little bit there So they too. were able to say, hey, hold on, we got to sell our house. But because we're selling our house, we're going to put so much money down on this new one, we don't need an appraisal. Yeah. So what we're offering is guaranteed, 100%. So what 100%. we're offering is guaranteed. Yeah. It's, we're not worried about your appraisal falling through. We're not, there's no appraisal guarantee in case it doesn't appraise. It's you're going to get this much money. You're going to get this out of your house. Yep. I just need to sell mine first. Yep. Exactly. And that's, exactly. that's and, and let, let's back up one more time before we move on from this conversation. Most people that are selling their house also don't care. 
because in most cases, you know, because this sometimes can create uh, occupancy and things like that. Most of them need time in their house anyways. Mm-hmm. So most yeah. people, most people really, 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 really don't care. Yeah. You just have to get out there. You have to be approved. We have to know you're approved. And we have to go strong with the offer. And when we put in an offer for you and we say, hey, they're pre-approved. We underwrote their income. So we know their income's good. We ran their credit and we know their credit's good. You said, you know, I ran AUS and we don't need an appraisal. All I need is them to unlock this money from their assets. Like it's it's almost a ca- it's, it's it's basically a cash deal as soon as this house sells. Like absolutely, it's, it's done as soon as that house is sold. Yeah. So, so moving on, last topic um, for this edition here is our loan of the month. So loan of the month, we had a young lady call us for an opportunity. She was kind of struggling with the same thing. She wanted to get pre-approved. She's renting right now. Wants to get pre-approved for a home. Going through her application and she mentioned that she didn't have much in assets didn't have much saved as far as cash cash to close uh, for down payment things like that so one of the things we noticed was she had this investment property and investment property was actually house deeded to her by her mom taking care of her mom with it and said is there any way i could use equity from that to get some money to go and purchase my new home yes we definitely can do that so we start working on this cash out opportunity for an investment property that she owned, had a label as investment property. Mom just lives there. It's a renter. Yeah, yeah. Living there, paying zero dollars. But uh, free but, runner. Free runner. For, Chris don't like those. <laughs> no free runners. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she's able to pull money out. But do, by doing so, you know, going through pulling credit, you know, we said, hey, what we can also do is pay off a lot of these debts. And really increase your credit score. So now we can get you the cash out that you're going to need. We can also increase your credit score. It's going to make you a lot stronger buyer here. So we can stop running, get out there and purchase that home. So at the end of the day, after about two and a half weeks is all it took, we were able to pay off $49,000 worth of debt for her, including some of that was her own personal debt, personal loans, um, and also some tax liens that we had against the property that they were very thankful. Like I almost forgot about that, but I'm so glad that I can forget about that now because that's completely cleaned up and additionally walked away with $38,000 to put in her bank account now that she's going to use to get pre-approved to go purchase a home and stop renting. So again, some great opportunities and ways that you can um, you know, maneuver around having debt. But when you have those other properties and you have equity in homes, there's a lot of things you can do to take advantage to better your situation. hundred percent. And, and just to, that was that was an awesome loan, like a great deal. Like, the, I mean, honestly, changed this person's life. Yeah, Ch- changed the outlook of her life too for yeah. what's going on. Um, but you know, c- kind of like Max said, like, don't be afraid to look at refinancing and taking cash out of your house and and using it. Like, don't. Uh, some people look at their house and they're just like, oh, I got to pay it down, or I got to pay it off, or I got to get rid of that payment. Well, having no house payment doesn't matter. If you have thousands of dollars of credit card payments. Yeah, paying 21%. And you're paying 21% and you're going nowhere on them. Mm -hmm. So Mac took this and he looked at this and he said, hey, guys, like, I know we have this house that we don't have debt on. Like, we don't have to worry about necessarily having debt on this house. But if I look at all of your other debts cumulatively and I add them up, and then I look at if if we just took the balance of those debts and moved them into a mortgage and moved them into a, you know, on a monthly mortgage payment... You'd be paying. I know they had to be paying way less on the new oh, yeah. mortgage. Oh yeah. Than they were in minimum monthly payments, just on on that substantial higher less. interest debt. So four figure less. So they were paying a thousand dollars plus less per month in, in in monthly bills. And I'm I'm guessing I didn't I didn't see all of those accounts, but I know some of those accounts they were probably just paying interest ads, so they were really going nowhere. Mm-hmm. So now they're paying a thousand dollars less a month. In, in a monthly bill, it's, it's towards a house now instead of towards different debts. So the debt is on the house now, but they're paying $1,000 less towards the house. All of that monthly debt is gone. And this person still got $38,000 in a lump sum of cash that they put into their savings account because they're now going to use that 38000 that they pulled out of equity of this house to take it and put it down on a new house. And then she's going to be, she's, is she renting right now? Or she, yep, yep. So, so this person's renting right now. And they just were able to withdraw all this this money, pay off their debt, 
Mm-hmm. In in most cases, a renter would be paying it back. Now, I know you said it's like yeah. it's it's a family member who's renting. It's that free rent. But in most cases, this renter would now be paying down that debt for them. And then they're also taking $38,000 and they have that to go put it down on a new primary residence that they're going to be able to buy. So you just and got- improve credit score by paying all that stuff well, up. That's true because credit's they, going to improve tremendously. With all that debt and yeah. all their credit lines being maxed out, their credit score was was probably down quite a bit. Yeah, it, it was it was above it was above 700 and I guarantee you when she goes to purchase we'll be above 700 for sure. So now when it, so now when it's above 700, their rate's going to be improved and and all of that. And then down the road as they continue to improve their credit, this is going full circle. You might be able to refi that loan that they just took out and save money on that rate again. Yeah. But. Yeah. So that, that, that was definitely a good one. That was one um, that was kind of like, wow, really, we're, we're doing this. We're, we're uh, changing a lot of things here and moving a lot of things around. This person is going to completely better their situation. They're getting exactly what they called. And again, it was kind of like they called to just ask what they thought. You know, I'm not sure if I can do this. This might sound like a stupid question, but is this possible? And like, if you have these scenarios where you're running through um, real estate scenarios and you're kind of thinking outside the box, I mean, we are kings of thinking outside the box. It's, we it's literally outside, what we do. We live outside the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're thinking outside the box on ways around that we can get uh, people in better situations for financially, for where they're living, for whatever it is that they're trying to do. So when it comes to that, to me, there's no stupid question. Yeah. Your, your home and your real estate, I mean, any of your real estate, really, it should be like a tool and a vehicle to help you build wealth. It should be part of your wealth. Yes. So don't, you know, don't one track mind it and, and just focus on only the home and then let all your other debts pile up. Like use your home as a tool to manage all of your other finances. It, it really, it, it, if you can pull it into the whole financial picture and, you know, go through it, 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 it might really, you might, there, there might be money savings out there that you didn't even realize, but you got to, like you said, you got to come in with an open mind. And honestly, j- like Max said, like, just call. Don't, don't be like, ah, I don't want to call those guys and waste their time. I don't really think it would make sense. I can't tell you how many people I've had call me and say, hey, this is probably a weird question or it might yeah. not make sense, but what if I did this? And I'm like, that's not a weird question at all. You should do that. Mm-hmm. Why, do, why haven't you done that yet? And then obviously we'll, we try to do it at that point, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, don't, no, there is no question too dumb if you're even thinking about your mortgages or your finances or your real estate and you're curious about something or, or maybe not even maybe you're not thinking about your mortgage. Maybe you think your mortgage and everything's in a great spot, but you're looking at all the other finances and your debt and your credit card and the stuff that you're buried in uh, and you have a house and you're like, I don't know, can I help myself? Can I be one of those people? Call us. Like, yeah. like, please call our office. Someone here will be so much more than happy to talk to you about it and try to figure it out for you. Yeah, what you think might be a dumb question might equal a really smart opportunity. What do you think might equal what might be a dumb question might might be so dumb that it saves you 200 bucks a month. Or more. Or, sure. or, or more. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in some cases. Yeah. So coming full circle with today, uh, wrapping it all up, a couple bullet points. Again, we have the government 125 loan, 125 basis points towards VA and FHA streamlines to be for refinances. Again, if you got a re, or if you got a VA or an FHA within 2023, you're going to fit this bubble. Give us a call for that market update. Conv- I'm going to interrupt him on that. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt him on that. Definitely give us a call. But September like, 2nd. Like, runs out. Don't, don't be the person that's like, oh, refinances suck. I don't want to do this. Refinances and, and mortgages in general, when you work with us, are very easy. These streamlines, like... Well, I'm going to say my dog can do them, but he knows a lot about mortgages. But, <laughs> but, but like literally bogey can do them. Like my dog can do these refis. They are so fast. They are so easy. Like, yes. All right. Back Super to what you were simple. So then we're going uh, market update, conventional loans. Again, if you got a conventional loan, seven, five, higher, maybe even low sevens, we could be looking in for a refi opportunity coming up right now. Give us a call. Reach out for those. Don't wait on your pre-approvals. And again, let the, uh, let the properties that you do own work for you for your financial success. So glad you guys stopped in to check this episode out. Can't wait to see you guys next time.